This lesson covers the chi-square goodness of fit test. It is suitable for a one-way contingency table that represents a categorical variable with two or more levels. In this example, a statistics professor created a test with four true-false questions. He assumed that students have a 50% chance of answering each item correctly. If his assumption is correct, test scores should have the distribution shown in the table. He wants to know if scores follow the expected distribution or not. That is, the null hypothesis is that scores follow the expected distribution, and the alternative hypothesis is that scores do not follow the expected distribution. The professor gave his test to 150 students. The number of students he observed earning each score is listed in the table. For example, two students earned a score of zero, 14 students earned a score of 1, and so on. To conduct the test, we select a significance level of 0 0.05, and we can use a table to find our chi-square critical value. In this case, we have a chi-square with 4 degrees of freedom, and the critical value is 9.49. For a categorical variable with i equals 1 to c possible values, the equation for the chi-square goodness of fit test is shown here. For each level of the categorical variable, take the square difference between the observed frequency and the expected frequency, divide this quantity by the expected frequency, repeat the calculation for every level of the categorical variable, and add them up. This is the chi-square statistic. The first step in computing the chi-square statistic is to find the expected frequencies. Returning to our example, we compute the expected frequency by multiplying the probability by the sample size. For example, 150 times 0 0.0625 is 9.375. In a similar way, 150 times 0.25 is 37.5. We can repeat this calculation at the remaining levels of our variable to obtain all of the expected frequencies. Next, we need to take the difference between the observed and expected frequencies. For example, at a test score of 0, we take the difference between a 2 and a 9.375 to get negative 7.375. Next, we take 14 minus 37.5 to get negative 23.5. We can continue with this calculation for the remaining score levels. The observed minus expected frequency is also known as a raw residual. We can square each of the raw residuals and divide them by their expected values. For example, if we take negative 7.375, square it, and divide by 9.375, we get 5.8017. For a test score of 1, if we square negative 23.5 and divide it by 37.5, we get 14.7267. Again, we can repeat this calculation for the remaining score levels. Now we have all of the information we need to compute our chi-square statistic. We just add the values in the last row to get our chi-square value of 121.67. Because 121.67 is greater than our critical value of 9.49, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that scores do not follow the expected distribution. Now that we've rejected the null hypothesis, we might want to know where our distribution differs from expectation. We can do that by computing a Pearson standardized residual. This standardized residual is computed by dividing the raw residual by the square root of the expected value. Standardized residuals that are large in absolute value, say two or more, indicate places where our results deviated from expectation. Returning to the example, we can compute the standardized residual for a score of 0 as negative 2.41. We obtain this value by 
taking negative 7.375 and dividing it by the square root of 9.375. Likewise, for a score level of 1, we can take negative 23.5 and divide it by the square root of 37.5 to get our standardized residual of negative 3.84. We compute the remaining residuals in a similar way. In conclusion, we can say that the distribution in the population is not consistent with the expected distribution. That is, the questions on the professor's exam do not each have a 50% chance of being answered correctly. According to the standardized residuals, we had fewer low scores than we expected and more high scores than expected. In other words, the test was easier than expected.